here for the first time we have this scientific uh, proof that we are being spread. We are being spread and it's incredible and it's hard to believe but we are being spread. I think at this moment to stop is not an option. Once you know it and once you have a tool like this and an opportunity like this, that the issue of chemtrails or persistent jet contrails or whatever name you use for it, that this um, uh, phenomenon is recognized as being real, publicly debated on. In the context of geoengineering, I think it's high noon to bring this to the public. This is what the sky is supposed to look like. These are old paintings. We forgot this, I'm afraid. In the years that I have been a medical research journalist, I have looked at many, many things. And I found the same three issues in whatever I'm looking at. And that is that we are being dumbed down. We are being made sicker and we are being made infertile. Citizens gathered from around the world in Belgium for the first International Chemtrail Symposium. The event attracted leading professionals, politicians, and activists who discussed the health, environmental, and social implications of these programs. Today, it's only going to be about facts, documents, figures, patents, licenses, everything that brings us truth to truth. We have no other weapon against this past complex than exposing and bringing the dark works in the light of the truth. We have the hope that by our efforts, more and more people will become aware of the fact that we are deceived by our leaders. So today, we, as a family, join forces with the people who publicly made known to the world that chemtrails are not a conspiracy theory but a conspiracy fact. From the Technische Universiteit Delft in the Netherlands. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Koen Vermeer. Well, I'm uh, Koen Vermeer, I'm a university professor of Delft University of, of Technology. Usually people are with their heads to the ground in their own two-dimensional space and they don't look up. But if you do, you see more and more spaces like this. And it, it, it worried me too. I, I have no explanations to our students about these phenomena. And then I studied it myself and I found out that I couldn't give them the answers they wanted because I think that the phenomenon is not natural. It's not natural what is happening. And the explanations that are given to us uh, are not enough for me. If you look at them from a scientific point of view, the first thing a scientist does is trying to explain something. Because I'm smart and my students are not as smart yet, so I have to give them answers to questions. But if you ask most scientists honestly, they cannot answer all your questions. If people are using uh, climate control all over our heads, I want to know about it. I want to know the consequences, I want to know the health impacts, I want to know everything. I need, as a teacher in my university, to give answers to my uh, students. And they have good questions. And I don't have the answers. And I want to know. Excellent. And we should discuss this. Ladies and gentlemen, for, for here you in the auditorium and for all over the world, Michael Murphy. Well, thank you very much. It's definitely an honor to be here in Belgium. The, the people who are in power control everything. They control the markets, they control us, and now they're even controlling the weather. And they can use that for warfare applications. The one thing that they cannot control is what God had originally made, and that's natural organic seeds. This is called the Hegelian dialect. It's called problem, reaction, solution. The problem here is massive amounts of aluminum, things starting to die. The solution is company X that says, hey man, you're not getting yields on, on your crop. Everything's dying. 
but I got the solution. I got a seed that will grow in this environment. The only problem is now you have to start buying from me. We're a little concerned that maybe part of this agenda could be to kill off anything that's natural and organic and re-engineer it with aluminum resistant GMO seeds. Uh, many may know we just got back from a week of filming in Hawaii and uh, it was an incredible trip. A big concern for the people there is they're beginning to see softening of the coconut trees. But their concern is that these programs may again be part of a, uh, of a broader agenda to destroy anything that's natural and organic so that the corporate redesigned GMO foods might be the only thing, uh, only source of food for people. I didn't anticipate so many people, um, young and old, who are interested in, uh, in this phenomenon and are concerned about it. And I especially liked the, the address that the young girl gave uh, yeah. today. Uh, only 17 and already making an address to the, to the audience that is, well, incredible. My name is Sofia Xenidis. I am 17 years old. It is quite scary to know that the air we breathe is not what it's supposed to be. That the food we eat and the water we drink contain traces of those substances which are sprayed out over all of us as though we were being poisoned by insects. The feeling that this is causing me are feelings of deep anger and rage. I don't want to be poisoned. I don't want to have to be infected with cancer. And I'm just so angry that this global poisoning can be going on, on such a massive scale. And not enough is being done to stop this crime. A clear answer to one question. Are we being spread? Have we been spread? Yes. And is it their intention to spray again? And again, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to deal with it? How are we going to stop it? I know the answer. There is only one person who can stop it. Did you know it? You are. You are the person, the one you have been waiting for. We are magnificent beautiful, godlike, divine human beings. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, in this auditorium and in the whole world, thank you so very much for being present with us. And for now, please enjoy this anthem. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, I'm glad that the weather's been good for you fellas so far. Just think if we were doing this in the wintertime, you might, if you're going to Washington, D.C., you might run into snow. <laughs> Thank God or not. That's right. Um, you know, it's interesting because of the, uh, the different weather modification programs. There's something like, I think, right around 32 in the continental U.S. alone going on. So the theory is that geoengineering is in part weather modification. You know, Mike, that's a very good point. There are so many subsets uh, connected with this issue of geoengineering. Uh, people are writing to us all the time with information about the connection to global warming, the connection to weather modification. Uh, some people think there's a connection with Morgellons disease. Uh, others think it's, uh, it's kind of a, a means of transmitting electromagnetic uh, impulses from the harp uh, antenna system up in Alaska and Siberia. Boy, it gets your head spinning and each area I think is is worthy of investigation but we have so little time I think it's wise for us to stay focused on just the aerospraying spraying and the toxic effect of these chemicals and the destruction of the planet and the damage to human health. What more do you need than that to convince people that we have to put a stop to it? So to stay focused I think is our mission on this one. 